considering having a requirement that you can't have any vendors or venue booked yet. Do you think this is a good idea? Or should I allow a certain number of booked vendors um, and venues? So what, what do you want to accomplish by this? Or what do you want to avoid? Okay. I, I don't know. I was trying to uh, pretty much have insight from the beginning, like, be able to recommend good vendors and a venue and all of that. And sometimes when they've already done that, then I can't have any input into. Um, okay. And so because you don't have input, then what does that, what does that mean? I'm just thinking a lot of times they miss important questions about venues that may not work for what they're trying to do. Okay. Um, like things that they miss and the same thing with a vendor they may miss certain things that I would have had more insight on to ask questions about and I kind of just wanted to be able to just be with them from the very beginning how, how does that harm in the event that somebody books a venue or a vendor that is not um because again we're focusing on full planning which is why I'm, I'm asking all these questions they book a venue or a vendor that you would have advise differently about but they were still willing to pay you for full planning instead of partial or coordination are you able to then advise them on what to do next like how to handle it or make it work mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah because you you have to be able to figure out how to make it work i'm just trying to avoid the figuring out part but i guess that's my job but <laughs> just just try to make it as easy as possible. So what if someone comes to you and I mean, I've had this situation before hires me for full planning and they're going to, they're using a hotel that I've used before and they booked the hotel before. Like if anything, they're actually saving me time because I I'm familiar with working there. Right. And they're still willing to pay me full planning to help them through the service. So, and it's, and I just think that you have to, it's, 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 it's a personal choice, but I would say, no, I don't, I don't see the benefit of this. I think that this is something that you use when you're communicating with people before they book. If they ask the question or if you're like, Hey, like, Hey, I'd love for you, you know, Oh, hey, you don't have a venue yet. Yeah. This is why I would love for you to hire us before you book a venue. This is why I would love for you to hire us before you do that. After that, let people make their own choices. And, and that because you're not responsible for the fact that they made decisions without you and then now are dealing with the consequences. I don't see how that means that you walk away from someone who's willing to pay you full planning money. Okay. So you um, do you think there should be any type of like, what if they booked almost all of their vendors? What but if that's the planning at that point, then is it? still maybe why, why would somebody want to hire you for full because this is do you know what type of person would hire would book each because this is kind of your again this is going back to business owner taking off the wedding planner hat putting on the business owner hat as a business owner you should know what what type of person should buy each of your packages so that you can tell them which one they should be buying so well, that, oh go ahead yeah. So at that point, you're like, what if they've booked everything? I'm like, are they coming to you saying they want full planning? Or are you just not sure which one to recommend to them? It'll be more partial. So my thing is, I, um, I'm i thinking about just offering one package, which is full planning. Okay. Um, so I guess that's why I was trying to figure out what to do. Um, because I will be offering like floral as well. So I didn't want to have too many... Um, planning packages I just wanted one like full full planning package so then I was so then I'm thinking if they booked a certain amount of vendors then they don't necessarily it wouldn't be really full planning anymore so then that's what I was thinking about the should I put a limit on the number so I think so I would say this, this is this is where I would leave it I would say number one uh, floral design and wedding planning are two completely different services. My business grew tremendously when I separated the two. Um, and the people that I've coached who do, who do both, their businesses grew tremendously when they separated the two. It sounds like you're not clear on the value of full planning. 
Um, and the reason I say that is that most times when people put them together, it's because you want your selling point to be, hey, yeah, if you book this package, I'm gonna do the floral, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. You get everything, right? And that's why it's worth this much money. When really, that's not the value of full planning because full planning is most, when you really think about it, when you look at celebrity event plan, look at all the celebrity weddings, go on Instagram, look at anybody who got married within the last five years who's a celebrity, you'll notice that they have a, a separate wedding planner and a separate florist, right? So high end, mm -hmm. people want people who specialize in very specific things for the most part. I was literally repelling people when I was doing, when I was telling them, oh yeah, do plan and do, like I was repelling the exactly what I wanted by doing that. I found that the people with the higher budgets were always confused on why I did both and they went with someone else. Right, so I'm just, that's just my two cents. That's what, that's what I found. The second thing I would say is you can do whatever you want as far as either having just one full service package or having multiple, but that should be based off of what kind of work you want to do, right? The P, I know people who do nothing but coordination and they, they thrive, right? Because they do nothing but coordination. They charge at least 3K for it. And they're happy there because they don't want to plan, right? And I think that the, the, I know people who only do full service event planning because they're like, I just want to be involved from the beginning. But what that means is that if somebody comes to you who basically wants coordination, you say, no, I don't offer this service. That's okay. Because you don't have one right so you have to decide if you want to do one or if you want to do three and there's no right or wrong answer but what having one service literally what that means is this is the only thing i offer so either you want this or you go with someone else and you're protecting your own space because you don't want to be a coordinator you don't want to do partial you don't want all that right one of the things i work with um, for our clients that are in our program um the very first thing we go over is like your, your packages and i tell people all the pitfalls i've had over the years changing my packages partial and how how come I was basically offering partial but still doing full and things that I've put in place to avoid that and usually after that people are clear on what they want to offer and don't want to offer but it's like you just have to do that work to decide what you want to offer and what you don't because the thing is that I can't answer that for you you can literally you can do exactly what you said like have full planning only you're, you're more than welcome to do that but it's going but that what that means is that anybody who comes to you is either just gonna buy that full planning service. Let's say you, char you charge maybe 5K for it. Uh, and I'm just t t throwing out numbers, not telling you what to charge, but let's say you charge 5K for it. And if they're like, oh, well, I already have this and I already have that and this and that book. And you say, this is, this is what I offer. <laughs> so either you take the 5K service or maybe I'm not the best fit for you. And then they go to someone else and they get coordination. If I was to if I was to say I only want to do full service planning, I'm more than happy. Like even today, I sometimes people are like, well, I just, you know, I really want this service, but I can only afford that. But I don't know if I'm the right, I'm not the right fit for you, right? And this also goes back to that funnel I was talking about. You're, you're not trying to fit, always fit a round square peg in a round hole if your funnel's full. If you're getting inquiries every week, people are coming to you every week. Hey, hey, oh my gosh, are you available on this day? I would love to work with you. I love you. People keep coming to you. People keep coming to you. You can let go of the people who are not a good fit because you're not so desperate for every single person that comes your way to be your client, right? And that's where you get to say, this is like, literally your packages decide what you want to do. And maybe it sounds like maybe you don't want to do partial and maybe you don't want to do month of, which is fine. It just means that you also have to realize you're letting go of everyone else, which is fine. Right, because then that means that you're focusing on what you want to do, which is kind of the purpose of business, you know, staying in your zone of genius and doing what you want to do.